Hello and welcome to Talking on Purpose with Tori. This is the internet show where we talk about all things related to church growth, communication, and of course, social media. I am your host, Tori, a media ministry consultant living here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And my purpose is to help churches and faith-driven organizations to combat inertia and start embracing the powerful, powerful way that God wants to use you, your unique talents and gifts within the church within the body of Christ to amplify his gospel. Today's final session within this series of limiting beliefs is centered around our therapy, the therapeutic ways we are able to soothe ourselves and get through the rough patches and to focus on God through our trials and tribulations. And of course, the storms, the waves come crashing, the wind is blowing, those moments when we are unable to see clearly a pathway through, but with focusing on Jesus, focusing on the word of God, focusing on his truth, we are able to push through even walking blindly in it. That's where our faith comes in. So before we begin this session, I do want to remind you that I am not a medical doctor nor a licensed physician. I am a woman of God who firmly believes that he sends us those that will help grow our faith, be beneficial towards our attitudes so that we can grow in spiritual maturity. I firmly believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, when we humble ourselves and give our flesh over to God and we say, Lord, we don't know how to do this, please help me, that he will come near. And as we listen, as we listen to his words and we listen to his truth and we listen to his guidance, he will direct us. A limiting belief. I don't need therapy. I'm fine. Those words or that phrase is kind of a trigger, especially in most relationships. When we ask the question, how are you? I'm fine. It normally means that we are not. I want to come into a space and present an idea to you that comes from the Bible, first off, but it's a a pattern that I have experienced. I have been the victim but I've also been the villain. And that is the story of Jesus when he healed the man who had a legion of demons. If you recall the story, he cast out the demons into the pigs and the townspeople got upset because all their pigs, their farm, their money, their things, their possessions were drowning in a sea. And they wanted Jesus to go away. They did not care so much that the man was healed. Well, big whoop, all of my money, the ways that we provide for our family, those things are in the sea drowning. But this one person, we are supposed, he's been tormented. He's had a legion and now he's sitting here in his right mind. Okay, but what about my pigs? What about my stuff? What about my farm, Jesus? What you gonna do about that? I'm glad that this man is healed. Maybe I'm not because I don't think they express any type of gratitude. They actually forcibly had him forcibly removed from their town. They, they call security on Jesus. Let's be real. Okay. They call security on Jesus. They had Jesus removed. Oh, that's a whole word. I'm not going to preach. I want to get through to the hope of this whole session, but that's, that's a good thing. Just, let, let, just a, um, 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 just a quick moment. Have you had Jesus removed by security? Have you called on some people to have Jesus removed from your life? Have you had people surround you who would help you remove Jesus from your life? Okay. <laughs> to have you doing those ungodly things. Okay, I'm done. Let's get back to the therapy because I'm not fine. We are not okay. We are not okay if we are living life without Jesus as our guide, as our mentor, as our comforter, as our Holy Spirit divine brother who is leading us towards life and not to death. That was a decision. That was a whole decision. Life, choosing life, choosing the person who was strong and redeemed in the Lord versus the things that were dead and drowning. 
Hmm. So to dig further into the story, how does that relate to us now? How do we perhaps mock people who have grown, who have become strong in Christ? We say things like, oh, I thought you were never going to do that. Or you said you never do these things. Look at you now, hooping and hollering and praising the Lord, praying every day, bowing down on your knees. Why do your knees look like that? Oh, you've been praying. You need to find another way to pray because that's ugly. Or we just continue to disregard, degrade, discourage the new believer, the one who's accepted Christ fully into their lives by repeating the things or the actions or the stuff that they did in their past. We are now the reminders. We are acting as Satan's vessels, reminding them of their faults and not embracing and rejoicing with them as they have become a new creature and offering them a new way of doing things, a new type of conversation. Instead, we're trying to draw them back in. I am guilty. I have done that. I am so guilty of that. And I continue to ask and seek forgiveness anytime that my mind wants to go back to blaming someone for their faults in the past because their faults hurt me. And that's where I want to go with this. When we are hurt by someone's actions, if we are more mature than they are, then what we should do is be honest. This is where the therapy comes in. We need to be honest with that person and tell them, you know what? I am so glad you received Jesus and he is working and he is new in your life and you are on fire for God and you're doing the things that I had hoped and prayed for that you would do, that you would rise up and step up and step into that faith. I am so proud of you. I am so happy for you. But let me tell you, because this, our relationship can't grow until I, until I'm honest with you. And I want to let you know that all those years that I was praying for you, all those years, all that time that I thought that you weren't paying attention to the things that I was doing as I was walking faithfully with God, that hurt. It hurt me because I knew you were hurting our Lord. And that infuriated me. It made me mad. It made me want to give up. It made me want to stop praying. But now that I see that God has indeed answered prayer, I can rejoice I can let go of that bitterness. I can thank God that he was listening and that it wasn't in my timing, but it was in God's perfect timing because his will is to be done. I want you to think about the beneficial longevity of having that type of honest communication with that new believer, how much more it will inspire and motivate them to be emotionally articulate when it comes to the things that they've done in their past, when it comes to the things that they are going to do. Let that be the guide. So let's start by accepting the role that we played within the, the hurt, within the storm, the trial, the wilderness season. If we get therapy, if we seek God to help us change our language, if we seek that professional that God sends to us to help us change our mindset, to help us change our belief system that helps us work, that helps us work through the limiting beliefs that we can't trust this person anymore simply because they had a rough start, because they had a rough 10, 15, 20, 40, 50, 70 years we can because God died for them as well. He died while we were yet sinners. Is it time for therapy? What is limiting your belief in God? To close out this session, I would like for us to focus on Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. They will be in the show notes as well as the description box below. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 6. Now the mind of the flesh is death, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace 
the spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God both now and forever. The mind of the flesh with its sinful pursuits is actively hostile to God. It does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot. And those who are in the flesh living a life that caters to sinful appetites and impulses cannot please God. However, you are not living in the flesh controlled by the sinful nature, but in the spirit. If in fact, the spirit of God lives in you, directing and guiding you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not a child of God. And now let's move down to verse 28. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Our attitudes can become more beneficial. The way we speak to people can become more beneficial. We can now act as Christ would when things do not go exactly according to our plan. We can know that God is in control. We can know because of the faith that we have in him. We can know because we have seen him work through our lives. We know that we are not the same person we were 10 years ago, five years ago five days ago. It is by faith that we keep walking. It is by faith that we accept help. It is by faith that we seek God and we do not allow our emotions to guide us. We allow God to. Our emotions can be a gauge and those emotional habits that we have, we can still pray about and ask God to deliver us from, to help us to see the good in people, to help us see that he has created a new being, placed him before us, placed that person renewed free of the demons, free of the anguish of their mind, the torment and the trauma, place them before us and we can embrace them. We can thank God that they are healed and renewed and not worry about the monetary physical things that we may have lost in the process because restoration with God, whew, that's fully satisfying. I am so grateful to God for putting this series in my heart at this specific time because of the Blueprint Initiative 1.0, the six-day course for ministry leaders, pastors, anyone who is desiring to be the change within the church to help the body of Christ. I am so excited that so many of you have responded in a positive way to this, again, six-day course, but a lifetime of transformation because we are going through the word of God. It is a constant renewal that we need each day. But he gave me this at a point when I was trying to finish this course and I didn't realize how well it lined up. I did not realize it at the at that time. I was just being obedient. I'm grateful to the therapists and the life coaches that I've had the experience of working with and who have listened to my stuff and have walked with me and prayed with me. I took my cares to God first. And I asked him, I said, Lord, I need someone that's going to bear this burden with me. I, I need a person, not that God isn't enough, but he does want us to be in relationship. And as we are joined together, we find even more strength and more ways to continue the healing and continue uplifting and motivating and inspiring and encouraging one another. And God, that's what God wants. God wants that for us. So if you haven't, if you've never entered into a therapeutic relationship, ask God if that is the right course of action for you. Lean into the Holy Spirit. Humble yourselves before him. Get down on your knees and pray. Lay prostrate before the Lord. Don't worry about what anybody else is thinking, doing, or saying. You get alone with God. And I pray that your limiting beliefs will be washed away and you will see the full measure of God's glory, his magnificent ways in how he continues to bless us, keep us, provide for us, and love us. Until next time, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe to www.toryslaughter.com, and I will see you next week.